Hello, everyone. Welcome to Hawaii Christian Coalition. I'm your co-host, Leslie Jones, and joining us today as our co-host is Dr. Pat Zucrin of Evidence and Answers, and he's going to tackle a major topic today called discerning truth in media. So buckle your seatbelts and let's get ready to go. Doctor? Yes, thanks, Leslie. <laughs> Great to be here once again. And, Likewise. You know, as we all know, the news media is a powerful influence in our society. The majority of people get their information from the news media. Mm -hmm. And so it's a powerful tool of communication. And in recent times, you know, recent polls are showing 65 to 75 percent of Americans today don't trust the media. They recognize that there is indeed a bias in the news media. And you're talking about the mainstream media, right? Yes, the, the mainstream CBS media. And NBC, those kind of guys. Okay. Yes. You know, um, in the 70s and 80s, about 75 percent of all people got their news, you know, from the big three, okay. CBS, NBC, mm -hmm. and uh, ABC. Mm -hmm. And today that statistic has dropped. It's down to 43%, oh my goodness. Oh, you know, bad. and yeah. as you and I know, uh, news has changed yes. from the days of Walter Cronkite <laughs> yeah, when absolutely. the job of the media, they saw their objective as reporting the facts. Yes, yes. But today it has changed mm -hmm. and now the news media, they definitely seem to have an agenda to persuade or mm -hmm. influence one's thinking. So it has indeed changed and it's been highlighted, you know, by our recent president, you yes, know, who indeed. came out and uh, is one of the few who's willing to tackle this issue, calling, you know, the news the fake news. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of just a few presidents willing to point out the bias in the media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it seems it seems like, you know, as you're as you're pointing out the contrast from back in the day, and and I'm dating myself here, but I remember mm -hmm. back in the day when I was a child that that when we had news from Walter Cronkite and and others uh, back then, when you were expressing an opinion, it was required that they put editorial or some other disclaimer Correct. underneath the the person that was speaking, so that you could tell that oh, okay, this is an opinion. This isn't necessary necessarily the facts of this particular topic, but this is the person giving you their you know version of what they think is right or wrong about the particular subject. And now it seems the opposite. There's no disclaimer, and you're getting a lot more opinion than this, and maybe some facts woven in there. But as you're saying, it seems to be that there's a, some sort of an agenda to persuade because the facts seem to be more aligned with the uh, direction of the persuasion rather than being delivered objectively so that the observer can sort of make up their own mind. Yes, you know, and Leslie, uh, bias in the media or bias in the news is uh, what they report, how they report it, and what they choose also not to report. Okay, so the definition of bias is real helpful. Right. Okay. And so it's the, you know, duty mm -hmm. of every citizen and especially mm -hmm. the Christian mm -hmm. to be discerning, to right. be able to discern truth from error. Yeah. You know, one Which of the helps. biblical principles here is Proverbs 18:17, which says, "The one who states his case first seems right until the other comes and examines him." Exactly. So the principle of cross-examination of mm -hmm really checking out your facts. You know, it's a commandment mm -hmm. given to uh, everyone, but especially to Christians. We need to be discerning on the facts that we get and how we allow it to influence us and, and shape our worldview and outlook of the culture around us. So, so if that's the case, and, and we're given, I mean, we've sort of, I think, gotten away from that in the sense that back in the day, you know, as we were talking about with the Walter Cronkite era, it's almost as though the journalists would do the work for you because they would present both sides and then you could make up your own mind. So I'm sort of, you know, trying to figure out then in today's media, if you're only getting, you know, if most of the, the outlets, the news outlets and the media outlets are only presenting a particular point of view, then how, what's the task of the Christian? Where do they look or how do they go about discerning whether they're getting all the facts or just part of the story? Yes, that's where you need to develop the skill of uh, being discern, you know, being discerning. Okay. To be able, you know, you and I have done research, mm -hmm. and we often, when we look at statistics or mm -hmm. someone's research, or we read a quote or something, we don't just sit there and say, "Oh, okay." Of course. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that differs, you know, from the undergraduate to the graduate level, you say, mm -hmm. "Where did you get that source from?" Yeah. 
how credible mm -hmm. is that source? Or mm -hmm. am I getting all the information here mm -hmm. and you need to go and do a little bit of digging? Yeah, so Some homework. Yeah, so unfortunately, <laughs> like you said, you just can't take a lot of the news media on face value, you've mm -hmm. got to do some research there. Mm -hmm. And according to these statistics, the majority of Americans here, the reason I have my laptop here, I want to get these statistics right, Okay. Uh, about 60% of Americans still get their news uh, from the television. Okay. Uh, about 38% online, but okay. that's growing with this new generation, of course. Right. 25% from radio and 20% and it's going down quickly from the traditional mm. uh, newspaper. Okay. Now according to the recent research of the Pew Research Center, okay. in 2016 they did a massive study and found that 25 million Americans mm -hmm. still watch the big three, NBC, yeah. ABC, and yeah, CBS. It's habitual after you turn it, we're sitting down to dinner, you turn on the TV, that's what you do, there's All a right. routine involved, right? But cable news is growing quickly mm -hmm. and there's a reason for that. Of course, Fox News is number one, okay. uh, but they have about 2.5 million viewers. Mm -hmm. okay. So that still falls short of the big three. Mm -hmm. And of course, MSNBC and CNN uh, are far behind Fox News and, and there's a reason for that. Okay. Now freedom of the press is absolutely essential for a free and prosperous society and our First Amendment guarantees that. Okay. And freedom of the press also holds you know the government accountable to the people whom they are to serve. Okay. But not only do we need freedom of the press as you know, mm -hmm. we need a fair press. Absolutely. We need an accurate press that reports the facts. So you can't have a free country without a free press, but you know you also need a fair press, one that is unbiased and going to report to you accurately the facts. So how is it then, if 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 we're if the journalism um, sort of industry, if you will, or discipline has kind of moved away from that, from from sort of giving us the balance between freedom and fairness, how do we as Christians try to to interject that fairness back? Yes, well, you know, one of the things you've got to understand is the media culture. Okay. You know, there have been numerous studies that have been done. Uh, Robert Lichter and Stanley Rothman uh, did one of the most massive studies of hundreds of leaders in the new in news industry, presidents of the major networks, but also the Washington Post, Times, Newsweek, uh, and they... So conservative and liberal sources. Yes, and they discovered the vast, vast majority of reporters mm -hmm. and leaders uh, lean far to the left, even more left than our liberal politicians. Wow. Yeah. Uh, in this study uh, by Lichter and Rothman, 54% said they were politically liberal. Only 19% said they were conservative. 86% never attend religious services. Oh. That. So when they're reporting on okay. things uh, that we are concerned about, things in the Christian world, you can see uh, why they're really unfamiliar with yeah. who the correct people <laughs> to go to uh, really are. And a mm -hmm. lot of the issues at hand, they seem you know, a bit, uh, uh, we, we would think, clueless. But that's one of the reasons why. And there's almost an in... in uh, I don't want to say inbred or in, inborn or some, some sort of bias that they've already, if they're already leaning far left and they're not attending a lot of these events where they would get the credible information, then of course they're going to be trying to persuade you of their version of events because they're not getting the facts, the objective facts, in, in order to balance out the presentation that they're giving. Yes, you know, in fact, uh, the several moral issues were in the survey and uh, only 15% felt that adultery was wrong. Oh my goodness. So, yeah, you can yeah, see. Yeah, compared to our culture in the Christian world. <laughs> see, see, this is the culture that they're in. Mm -hmm. Another study done by the Freedom Forum and Roper Center, saying hundreds of bureau chiefs and congressional correspondents and all discovered uh, the same thing. 90% voted with the left. Goodness. Only 7% would identify themselves as moderate or conservative. So you can see, you know, the summary of the report stated that Democrats outnumber Republicans in the news media yeah. 12 to 1. My goodness. So I'm not one of those conspiracy theorists who say, you know, there's a conspiracy going on here. Right. I just think that that's the culture. But 12 that to 1, in. That's a, those are yes. pretty, pretty hard odds to yes. overcome. <laughs> 
and, and they're surrounded in their media culture. If you go to New York, I mean, all the media stations are within a block yes, of, of each other, each other and mm -hmm. they dialogue with one another. I'm mm -hmm. sure when they go to restaurants, they all run into each other. Mm -hmm. And so they think that the world thinks like them. I was just going to say, so you're, there's a temptation for a groupthink kind of a uh, message going on there. Right. And so uh, that's the culture the media mm -hmm. is steeped in. And so many of them may think they're, what they're reporting is unbiased mm -hmm. when indeed you know because that's the culture they're in and they think this is the norm mm -hmm. well actually for the average person uh, they're come you know they're coming left mm -hmm. way left, left of, of the average of person the average yeah. person there yeah mm. so not even in the middle there's they're sort of skewing <laughs> as yes. we said earlier yeah yeah and so it's important we are able to identify bias in the media and there's mm -hmm. about you know five to six uh, obvious uh, things that you can see, okay. you know, where there is bias in the media and, and the ability to identify it, you know. So there are certain things we can look for, in yes. other words, when we're watching mm -hmm. a report of a particular station. Right. Okay. You know, first you can see bias in the language, mm. you know. Positive terms are used, you know, for the uh, position that the reporter may like, and okay. negative terms are used for the opposition, you know. Yeah, and we've and, seen a lot of that in the political reporting, right, yes. where, where Ms. Pelosi gets a lot of positive, whereas Mr. Trump doesn't yes. get a whole lot of positive. Yes. You know, or the abortion debate, Good right? Good point. Uh, Pro-abortion is called pro-choice. Mm -hmm. Well, who doesn't want choice, right? right? And the pro-life crowd is called the anti-abortion mm -hmm. crowd, almost mm -hmm. kind of implying anti-choice or mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. you know. Evangelical Christians are called fundamentalist. Yep. Radical Muslims are called fundamentalist. <laughs> so, but there's a big difference between an evangelical fundamentalist and, and an Islamic fundamentalist. Yeah. A One will difference. take your head off, and the other will pray for you. <laughs> yes. You know, I was being interviewed uh, in the Dallas News by a reporter, and during the break, she said, "You know, I don't have a problem with religion. I have a problem with fundamentalist." Mm. And I said, "Whoa!" I said. There's a big difference between a Christian fundamentalist and an Islamic fundamentalist. Well, I was going to say, was she willing yeah. to define her terms? Yes. And she said, well, what do you mean? Uh -huh. And I said, well, Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, love your neighbor as yourself. Right. Jesus said, forgive your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Absolutely. So a person that becomes more serious about Christianity mm -hmm. is going to become more loving, more like Jesus. Mm -hmm. I said, and Islamic fundamentalists will want to interpret the Quran literally yes. and follow Muhammad. Um, to the T. Mm -hmm. What kind of man was Muhammad? He was a warrior. Mm -hmm. He fought in 29 battles. Uh, he made a living by attacking caravans. How did he say to treat unbelievers? Chapter 9 of the Quran, the Surah of the Sword. Mm -hmm. Right? They only have three choices. Convert, uh, live as a second-class citizen and pay the heavy unbelievers tax, tax. Mm -hmm. or meet the sword. Yep. You know, big difference there between those two. So. Uh, media bias can be seen in the language that you use. Okay. Media bias can be seen in what we call setting the agenda, mm. where reporters will include the stories they favor and exclude, you know, the unfavorable stories or have extensive coverage on the stories they want to cover, little if any on the stories that they don't uh, want to cover. Now, is there anything that, that the average person can do to influence that, or is that pretty much set by the media outlets? Or? Yes, that's pretty much set by the okay. media outlets, and the best thing that the average person can do is just stop watching those uh, stations. Or realize you know? what you're getting when, yes. if you do watch it. You know? Okay. You know, for example, I mean, in our time, you know, talk of the impeachment mm. of the president mm -hmm. was going on even before he took office. Right. And you can't impeach someone who's not in office. Right. It's just, it's a non, mm -hmm. It doesn't follow. Yes. And, uh, you know, after two years mm -hmm. of this investigation, uh, Special Counsel Robert Mueller concluded you know, just this past April that mm -hmm. Donald Trump and his campaign were innocent Absolutely. of colluding with Russia. Uh, then just recently, I think just last week, uh, mm -hmm. U.S. Attorney William Barr mm -hmm. stated, you know, affirmed Mueller's report and said that the uh, administration did not have any kind of collusion with Russia. And yet mm -hmm. what we're hearing today is uh, imminent impeachment of the president, it seems to be, you know, so on most of the outlets here. So they're just trying to keep the story alive, kind of hoping that if they give it enough time, it'll gain some traction? Is that the right. thing you think? Okay. And, and that would be an example of setting the agenda. Mm -hmm. You know, another one is placement. You know, what gets the front page or ah. the highlighted stories yeah, are the above ones. Above the fold, as they say. Yes, you know. And uh, 
sometimes they will uh, put uh, the real headline, mm -hmm. but because they don't like it, they put it in the back page. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. for example, when the jobs report came out, right, we've which is got, very positive. Yes, we've got a lowest unemployment rate. We've yeah, got in some, history. Yes, in several areas. Yes, we've got a booming mm -hmm. economy. Absolutely. And I've been looking for it all over on the front page. Yeah. And in most newspapers, <laughs> and when I'm watching CNN or. MSNBC at the uh, exercise club there. Okay. I don't see it at all. Wow. You know, or, or, or it's in a four-point font, right? Yes, yes. It's kind <laughs> it's of barely bad. legible. Right. Okay. So placement is another way. Okay. Uh, another one is interviewing. You know, mm. reporters may interview only the people mm -hmm. that they agree with, or if they mm. interview the other side, uh -huh. they'll get the kook, you know, or the crazy guy. Right. The, Just to make the, right. their position look even worse. Yes. You know, and you know, a good example of that just happened this past week, okay. you know, on May 1st, you know, May Day, the mm -hmm. Venezuelans, mm. you know, came out and rioted against the socialist president, Nicolas Maduro, right. calling for him to step down, yeah. you know, a uh, tremendous thing what they are doing. Mm -hmm. And on the same day, you know, they were interviewing the Democratic uh, candidates, the 2020 Democratic candidates, and none of them were asked by the media about Anything this. about the Maduro yes. story, and yet their platform is heavily socialist. Yes, right? you know, um, for example, Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. You know, he had a, uh, I believe, a 12-minute interview with with Brooke Baldwin on okay. CNN there, mm -hmm. and Nicolas Maduro. A lot of people may not know has endorsed Bernie Sanders. Oh my goodness! And none of these candidates were asked you know, about what's going on in Venezuela and how socialism there has worked out. Yeah, which hasn't and, been too good. Right. <laughs> and most people are leaving by the thousands. They mm. can't find jobs. They can't eat. It's, right. it's horrendous. Right. Marxism has never yeah. worked. The history, yeah, history shows that. Exactly. And here you've got a couple socialist candidates. Bernie Sanders, self-proclaimed, unashamed mm -hmm. socialist. There's a great opportunity to ask him about that. Not once did she bring up the issue. Okay. And so, so slanted interview is another yes. one. Mm -hmm. yeah, another one we call cherry picking or skewing the facts, okay. you know, where you just selectively choose or emphasize the facts that support your point mm -hmm. and leave out those that don't, you know, or drawing, you know, uh, illogical, unsubstantiated conclusions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. And I, I remember doing a whole uh, two hour radio show on this. On, Trump's quote Muslim ban they were calling it. Oh brother. You know? Right. Where he actually had an immigration ban on seven countries, one of which wasn't where the Muslim. terrorists are coming right, from. Right? North yeah. Korea. Mm -hmm. We've got over forty quote Muslim countries mm -hmm. and they weren't banned. Right. Just the Just ones the that had ones. declared war on the United States, you know, yet they called it a Muslim ban. And I remember here in Hawaii, immigrants from Japan and China and the Philippines were terrified mm -hmm. thinking they were going to be sent home. Right. Or if they went home to visit parents and they couldn't family, come they back, couldn't perhaps. come back, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah, um, just from getting that biased reporting from the media that put the fear in their hearts. Yes, wow. yes. Then Very we have powerful. something, yeah. Then we have something else called skewering the truth, oh, where boy. they misrepresent the information, uh, present faulty conclusions, mm -hmm. you know. And I was watching the other day and looking, uh, listening to the Green New Deal oh, yes, given yeah. by uh, Alexandria uh, Ocasio-Cortez and several AOC, other Democrats. AOC, for those of you who are familiar. Yes, and uh, what they didn't report, you know, you had to get it from the conservative uh, radio talk shows, really, mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, in, in 10 years, they wanted to replace all buildings in the United States with energy efficient ones. Yes. Replace buildings yes. now, not just not cooling. Just yeah. Get rid of the cows and the mm -hmm. airplanes, but replace the buildings. Right. Yeah. Oh, boy. The cows is another story. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Substituting air travel with high speed rail. Yeah. You know, and it sort of doesn't work too well for us here in Hawaii, right? Yes. Trying to get to the mainland. Well, it's funny that our senators and congressional representatives were in su are supporting this green bill. Yeah. So, well, I've heard. Uh, yeah. So, I don't know how. They expect uh, tourists to come to Hawaii. Right. You know, uh, phasing out fossil fuels entirely. Mm -hmm. You know, coal, oil, gas, and they're used to power the electrical system. Exactly. So I don't yeah. know, uh, you know, how we're supposed to power. Uh, yeah, and all the our, jobs that all that you know that would be lost because of that. I mean, it's the the impacts. I mean, yes. just on the face of it, how things are supposed to work and and the repercussions. It doesn't seem like are well thought through. Yes, and so 
uh, that part wasn't reported. Right. You know, and I had to go on websites and listen to conservative talk radio to get the rest of this green bill here. And so, exactly so if what you're it is. doing that as a professional who has a radio show, then how is the average layperson supposed to be able to to tackle all this this yeah. bias in the media? Yes. Well, um, you know the. Yeah, let me go over this last one. Oh, please. The, the last one Sorry. is photos and captions. Ah, you know, okay. where yes. uh, you get a candidate that you don't really like, and, and you'll always put them in, you know, a photo or catch them in some pose that's not... Unflattering. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now, the next question you ask is the key. How do we discern here? Well, first of all, we've got to be aware, and most people are now, that there is bias in the news media. Mm -hmm. I was saying this... 10, 15 years ago, wow. and, and no one was listening. At now we're all listening, Good. you know. And I think I'll, thanks a lot goes to the president who's really willing to bring this issue to the forefront. And do you think technology's had something to do with that as well? That we have more internet feeds yes. now and we can get sort of sources yes. from all over the place? We don't yes. have to just depend right. on what the big three tell us? So, you and I, who have done graduate research and also mm -hmm. teach, mm -hmm. uh, that and that's the second part. Okay. Check your source. Right. right. I mean, there are some uh, website sources out there that are completely fake news and they tell you about it, you know, like like um, The Onion, oh, you know, right. there's one. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, if you read a story and uh, there's no one else reporting it, mm -hmm. you may want to take a careful hmm. look at that story. <laughs> right. right. Then you want to see... There's a reason see, for that. Yeah, right. then you want to see if the techniques we went over mm -hmm. are being used in the reporting mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, like you and I know, you've got to do your own research. Right. You got to look at multiple sources. You know, mm -hmm. the answer is not, well, just watch Fox News. Right. You know, I mean, they can be biased <laughs> exactly. too. Exactly. I can be biased. Well, any, I am biased. You any, know? Right. Anything <clears throat> involving a human being probably right. has some kind of bias. It's yeah. whether or not they will own mm -hmm. up to it and try to compensate. Right. That's, that seems to be the key issue. Yeah. And so I tell everyone, you know, I'm coming from a conservative or a Christian perspective. Mm -hmm. So check out what I'm saying mm -hmm. as well. And right. hopefully, you know, I'm accurate, but uh, unfortunately, whereas back in the day we could trust, you know, Walter Cronkite, now we're going to have to look at multiple sources, radio mm -hmm. talk show, internet, mm -hmm. uh, Fox News, mm -hmm. CNN, and mm -hmm. check out those sources. So Christians, do your homework. That's yes. the short version. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> go ahead. And then we need to use our judgment mm -hmm. to uh, discover who's most reliable. There Good are some point. reporters out there that have a trustworthy record. Yeah, they're and more some consistent you know they're coming from a particular bias and it's not that you shouldn't ever listen to them you know mm -hmm. listen to them but understand oh they're coming from this particular now, slant do here. Do you feel comfortable mentioning any of those or what who, who would you have in mind there? Uh, well I think uh, um, like Sean Hannity comes to mind he's right. a very bold you know, yes. out, uh -huh. outspoken person. Right he's conservative whereas uh, someone else on Fox News like I think is Brooks Bear. Okay. <laughs> be uh, more leaning to the left. Yeah, so you, you can know. balance those two out. <laughs> right, mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, on our local news, mm -hmm. you know, you've got several reporters that lean to the left, mm -hmm. you've got some that uh, lean to the right, and you need to figure out, uh, you know, who they are mm -hmm. here. Um, <clears throat> sometimes you just have to wait and see what develops. You know, sometimes truth doesn't come out immediately. Mm. You know, you hear something, mm -hmm. and then you just have to wait and see how things develop. You know, for example, uh, the Trump-Russia collusion. Deal. Right. We didn't have all the facts initially. Right. So instead of making a judgment, mm -hmm. sometimes if it just doesn't sound right, mm -hmm. you just need to sit there and say, yeah. let's see what develops. Right. And it's, it's been a while, but uh, finally, I, I believe he's been cleared. Yes. You know, you know, another one was the Clinton Monica Lewinsky one. Oh, you know, we're yes. hearing all those rumors, and I said, no, it can't be. It can't. But as the news continued to come, it started, I was like, Something's going on here. Mm -hmm. Let's wait and see mm -hmm. what's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, and finally, you know, some good questions to ask yourselves is: Are these conclusions reasonable? I mean, do they match the facts? Mm -hmm. You know, they're saying uh, no one's voting for Trump. Nobody likes Trump. Yet I'm looking and I'm seeing his rallies are packed. I mean, yeah. they're overflowing, and I'm yeah. like, and a lot of the research and, yes. and the economy, a lot of the things that you're yes. saying aren't being reported. They're all in his favor, favor, but but because they're being suppressed there doesn't seem to be any logic behind, well, why would all these rallies be packed? Well, if you were getting the full story, right. you would understand. Yeah, and in the polls, you know, he was down double digits yeah. to and Hillary. Now he's up 
Yeah. You know, he yeah. was waiting. Yet I'm looking at the rallies and they're just completely packed. And mm -hmm. I'm like, is he really down double digits? Yeah. You know, yeah, so, so are it the depends on who you're listening to, right? Yeah, are the conclusions reasonable? Mm -hmm. And you know, what are the sources? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does it consider all the evidence? You know, you're listening. You're saying, well, you got three guys from this perspective. Did we hear anyone from that perspective? Mm -hmm. You know, so are there any other perspectives? And finally, you know, is it consistent with the Bible? You know, yeah. If you're Christian, you need to be paying attention to this, folks. Yeah, I mean, if you hear stats saying, you know. Uh, the vast majority of psychologists agree sex before marriages make for happier marriages. You know, <laughs> you're say, a Christian. No, to say mm, I'm not sure about that one. Yeah. What are the sources here? Yeah. You know, were there other uh, statistics looked at? Were there other studies or just this one? I mean, you, you hear something like that, you should start questioning. Well, and interesting, you you mentioned that because uh, just to tag off of that a little bit, there was another study that reported that in a lot of the mainstream uh, was reporting that Christian marriages were even with in terms of divorce. The same number of or percentage of Christian marriages were failing, quote unquote, or getting divorces as the secular uh, folks that that you know didn't go to church and whatnot. But then they actually did another study that corrected that and actually reported that people that did go to church and followed their Christian faith uh, consistently, they stayed married two-thirds greater lengths, you know, more often, I should say, than people that didn't have a faith or didn't follow their faith. And a lot of what was fascinating to me was that I found out a lot of churches didn't even have that information because mm -hmm. they were listening to the wrong sources. Yeah. So something goes contrary to God's truth, mm -hmm. you ought to sit there and say, ah, yeah. I'm not yeah. sure about Check that. Check that out. Right. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. There may be more to the story than what you're being told. Yes. So <laughs> here are some ways that I hope helps people discern truth in the media. Okay. Well, we've had quite an earful today, folks. This has been Hawaii Christian Coalition. Leslie Jones sitting in for Garrett Hashimoto with our guest today, Dr. Pat Zucharin. Thank you so much for paying attention. We hope you are blessed, stay blessed, and be blessed. Until we see you again, ahui ho.